We've always had this dream of rigging a line in the Stirling Range. A balancing act only few would dare to try. But it seemed impossible for such a long time. It's the highest range that we've got within reach. Just hoping the weather gives us a good window. How is she? High lining in Perth is limited by the fact that Perth is so flat. There's really not a lot of elevation anywhere. We have a lot of places that we can drive to, so we don't have to hike too far. You can sort of park in the car park and walk 10 minutes and be at the spot where we're lining. Some beautiful quarries and a couple of places on the ridge of hills that overlook Perth, but none of it is particularly high. You get people coming from other places and we're like, oh, we're going to go high lining. And then they're like, wow, this is not a high line. This is definitely a mid line. There's signs already for high lining areas in other national parks around the world. There is no signage for what we do out this way. I think before we started, there was maybe six established lines. And we've always kind of felt like a little bit of a younger sibling in terms of everywhere else that's slacklining. I really wanted for my birthday one year to do a high line. And at the time, as far as I know, the only two people that were active in the community were Matt and Nick. If you meet up with another slackliner, they will just teach you stuff. I learned from people overseas. And then they passed on a lot of knowledge to the community, just learning how to rig and learning how to high line and be safe. And also us ourselves going out to other communities and coming back and bringing knowledge. Once you've done a couple of lines, you realise that it's really necessary for people to work together. It's just been a little community growing since then. I think we asked someone who's an experienced rock climber to if he'd help us because we didn't entirely know what we were doing. I think it took us six hours to rig. It was so overkill. And when it was done, no one could take a single step. I started to see what people in our group were able to do. And I knew it would just get more and more epic and more fun as the skills improved. I feel like the Stirling Range is just like a powerful place. It's the biggest and most well-known mountain range in the greater southern of WA. It's popped up so many times over the years as a potential place for a line, but no one really had the confidence to tackle it. We start off on Google Maps, and then the next step is actually getting to those peaks and seeing if it's actually possible. In choosing a line, you need good drop-offs on both sides. The line needs to be long enough or not too long. You need good anchors. So it's just having all these things come together. 115 to that edge from here. It can be a painstakingly slow process. We'll probably try and make this quick because we're running out of time with daylight. Yeah, it's gonna be a dark walk back, no doubt. It's really good actually to see it now because yesterday we couldn't see it. You could even sort of see a potential from down here. You're like bridging gaps over there, like so excited. That looks pretty good. And that's like, that's gnarly. It's unreal. We're just going to have a look at what we could rig off, like boulders or trees. We would like it to be natural. So once we're gone, you wouldn't even know that we had rigged here. It's pretty cracked and flaky. And how's the drop off? Is it sheer? Not really. All the bushes are dead. 
I've had enough of looking here. Yeah? Yeah. I can't see anything. It's really hard to find some solid, trustworthy anchors. Maybe if we had gone up there years ago, maybe I would have looked at everything and not been as stoked. But now, yeah, we can go up there and, and we can see more. Yeah, they look good. After uh, three days of searching, I think we found something at least good enough to, to give it a crack. It would be the last piece of the puzzle on what has been a gigantic puzzle and a lot of work and a lot of effort by a lot of people. The line's gonna go from over there to Far Point over there. Um, it's still pretty wet and slippery. We're not sure how it's gonna go. There's no reliable weather station for that region. It's a little bit of uh, fingers crossed and just hoping. There's definitely no chance we're getting a line up today. It was just too dangerous. This is highlighting. Half the crew is leaving permanently to other countries, so we only have a couple of days. Everyone's a bit disappointed. We're expecting to get the line up. We're hoping for better weather tomorrow. If we don't get that, then there's a fair chance we won't get this line done, which will be devastating. We've decided to head back up in the morning and, yeah, pray for better weather. there could still be a lot of wind up the top. The way that the gully is shaped seems to channel the wind up a little bit towards the line. How is she? Oh, no wind so far. Oh, dream. I can't believe this. <laughs> oh my God, it's gonna happen. I still get really scared highlighting. Oh, bring us straight down to me, boy. And all of a sudden people point to me and they're like, Nick, you're up. My heart sinks a little bit. You wanna go? <laughs> My hamstring's a bit tight, you know, like maybe not today. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. And then it's just waiting for that first whip. I'm so scared of it. No, no, you can't. But then when it happens, I love it. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just give in to the fear and have some fun. That was actually really nice. Sick. I'm actually feeling great at the moment. I'm not actually sure what my goal was in highlining. I just want to feel really solid on a line. Like, I don't want to be scared. Oh. I was very jittery at the start. I can still remember being out on a line and not getting anywhere and thinking, this is not for me. Like, I'm giving up. What's the point? It's fine. Just keep going. Coming back, my nerves settled and I was like, you got this. For some reason I was like, ah, I, think, I think I've cracked something open here. I don't know what it is, but there's something that I've just achieved with myself in highlining. <sighs> it's gonna create a moment for the entire group to share. We've definitely progressed with our skills. Uh, it's just a good feeling that everybody got to go out and experience it after all the work we put in. Yeah, Joey. We were just up on a mountain with a group of friends that we all trust our lives with.
It's a very exciting time to be a slackliner in WA. It feels like we're leading this generation into new ground, new territory, and pushing the boundaries even more. It's really snowballed. This line is the 33rd in WA. Knowing there's all these other epic mountains around this area. Oh. That was an experience. Yeah, it's indescribable. That was exciting and terrifying all at the same time. And beautiful. There's going to be some big things here. What do you love so much that you'd be willing to die for? What makes your conscious flush gives you a constant rush. Stoked when the locals crush. Give death a poke and a brush till we post and we hope that you notice us. When the line goes up, near to believe things, we things made me cry, love to get on the leash rings. We found our tent, you can help us with these things. Spend a lot of money so that we can be free things. Searching for closure, then give yourself a whip and exposure. Butt slide off a cliff with your clothes off. If you want to learn to heal, then you gotta follow where your toes are. <laughs> Have you ever felt like stepping out of your shoebox? Hoping it'll be alright. You've woken up to all the chances that you've lost, yeah. You've really opened your eyes. You've got your whole life in your hands. But you're holding on to time.